good morning and welcome to the Missionary Morning Show. For as long as people can remember, we have been asking ourselves two questions. Where am I? And where am I going? And you may have experienced the anxious feeling that comes when the answer to those two questions seems a bit fuzzy. However, there is an answer to this question. Now, the answer probably won't help if you're trying to find your local pizza place or a grocery store, but it can help if you're looking to live your life focused on Christ when we live in a world that promotes the opposite. So let's talk about that. In life, there are really two worlds. There is the world that we all live in, and then there's the world that we strive to live in as followers of Christ. So let's go over what a Christ-centered world looks like. In this world, you'll see prayer, kindness, focusing on the service of others, gratitude for all that you receive, attending church, and repenting of your sins. Now, these are just a few of the things that Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ ask us to do to focus on them. But there is the key phrase, focus. Focusing isn't easy. In fact, it's extremely hard, especially when we live in a world where there are so many distractions. And here are just a few. So how do we do it? Do we just give up and accept that there is no solution? No, there has to be a way. So to help us learn how to live in the world and not of the world, please welcome former state president and now mission leader for the Arizona Tempe Chandler Service Mission of the Church Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Elder Stedman. Well, thank you, Elder Stedman, for coming on and, and letting us interview you and talk to you about your experiences and, and your insight. So we've been talking about these two worlds where one is the world that we live in and it has all these distractions and things trying to bring us down in the world that Holy Father and Jesus Christ want us to live in, um, that have all these good principles and things for us to do to live a life that's successful. So my question would be, how do we live in the world but not of the world when these two worlds collide? I think that you have to, you have to have the perspective of where you want to go. If you want to go to heaven, you can't go to heaven if you're dabbling in the world in areas that are going to bring you down so to speak. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it boils down to practice. And we have to practice being good. We have to practice what we preach. We go to church every Sunday. We listen to general authorities. We listen to prophets. We listen to the Savior. He answers our prayers. If we don't practice what we're being given, then I think the natural man will, will start his way over to being a part of being in the world. And so we don't want to be of the world, but we have to live in the world. So, and I know before being a mission leader for the service mission, you were state president. And with that, you had the chance to work with a lot of individuals um, who grew up maybe living a Christ-centered life or um, had the gospel in their life at one point or another, but they had doubts. So my question would be, why did they have doubts? Why did those doubts cause them to fall away from their beliefs? And what can we do to avoid letting doubts in our life make us prey to distractions and temptations? Here again, we have to rely on, rely on our faith. We know what we know. And we can doubt our doubts, but we shouldn't doubt what we know. I think that in in reviewing in my mind some of the members that I met with who eventually left the church, I think the littlest things creep into what they believe and those begin to form cracks which eventually grow into great big wedges and it, it ultimately separates them from, from the church, from those things that they believe. I remember an elders quorum president years and years and years ago as my wife and I were first married and he and his wife and my wife and I were very close friends and we did a lot of things together and after about five years 
we recognized, and he had been he had been serving as an elders quorum president. We recognized that they were no longer attending church, mm. and so I went up to him and I said, "Hey, I don't I don't see you very often in church." And he said, "Well, you know, I was baptized five years ago, and I gave." I gave the church five years, and I was determined that I was going to receive a vision, and I haven't received one, and so this is just like any other church. I'm going to go back to my old ways, hmm. which is which is really sad. We're not meant to receive. All of us are not meant to receive a vision or or a, a manifestation like Alma did or or Saul, but. Um, I think we have to exercise our faith. We have to, we have to say, I believe this to be true, or I know this to be true. We have to recount those experiences and live by what we, what we have come to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. I would like to let you know that I know that God lives. That Jesus Christ is his son. That as a savior of the world, he came down to redeem mankind. And through his sacrifice, through his atonement, we may be cleansed so that we may live in the presence of Heavenly Father once again. He has promised every, every person who's ever been born or will be born that we would receive a kingdom of glory. And if we live our lives based on the teachings that we are taught through living prophets and apostles, then the glory of the kingdom we have will be a lot, a lot higher than those who have committed atrocious sins in this world. And I know that my Redeemer lives, and I bear this witness in the name of Jesus Christ.